And we are live. JT here. Welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to take a moment to thank you, whether you are tuning in live as we stream into our Facebook community, whether you are watching the replay on YouTube or on Facebook, or whether you're listening to the audio on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me and my special guest today. And here's my reminder to you. The mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. So my challenge to you is to go all in on this conversation. And I guarantee you that if you do that, you will gain a valuable nugget of wisdom that will most importantly help you succeed at the game of life. I've been looking forward to my conversation with my guest today. We met early, around the spring of 2020, after we were both speaking at the OUA Mega Clinic. And from that conversation, I don't know, we just sort of hit it off and, you know, have stayed connected, mostly through social and, and really just, I don't know, there, you know, like attracts like. And I've just been blown away by just his consistency, his messaging, and just his thirst to learn and be a lifelong learner. My guest in the huddle today is a St. Francis Xavier and Waterloo football alum. He also is a Hamilton Tiger Cats alum. He is currently the defensive line coach and the head strength and conditioning coach at the University of Guelph. My guest in the huddle today is Coach Adam Kenya. How are you today, Coach? I'm doing great, JT. Thanks for having me on. It's been uh, long overdue, this, this conversation. I've been looking forward to it for quite some time. Definitely, brother. I'm, I'm enthused, and I know you're going to drop lots of wisdom because I see the messaging you always put out there. So, Coach, one of the things I, I always like to remind myself is that how important it is to count your blessings. And I know one of the most valuable resources we can give anyone is our time and our energy. So I just want to thank you for choosing to invest some of your time and energy with me and our community today. And I'm just really looking forward to our conversation today, brother. Well, thank you. The feeling is mutual. Okay. So brother, in the huddle, I always like to remind people to keep it simple, simple. And what I like to remind people is that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. So I'm curious, what is an interesting fact? I had a coaching colleague that said, we all have our quirks that maybe a lot of people don't know about you that you'd be open to sharing with our community. Yeah, um, I've heard you ask this question before. And so I was trying to prepare myself for it and I'm not one to, to think about myself uh, too much. So I actually had to, uh, you know, ask my wife what, what she thought the answer would be. And she brought up a couple of things. And, you know, one of those things are, uh, I'm, I'm a big uh, pop culture fan, um, you know, especially the nineties, early two thousands. Um, I can have a conversation or just drop a reference with certain people uh, and, you know, we'll know exactly what we're talking about. Um, you know, my best friend down in Ohio, we can, we'll say something in front of our, our wives and they'll have no clue what we're talking about. We'll just carry on like, you know, the scene of a movie or a TV show. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing. Same thing. We can do that with head coach Shane. Uh, yeah. You know, we'll just talk in the hallway and we'll drop something on each other or drop a rap lyric from the 90s. And so it's, okay. it's just fun to be able to do that. Uh, and then I guess coinciding with that, this is what my wife thought was a great idea. Um, uh, I used to be a DJ um, back yeah. at school at St. FX in my final year um, at Piper's Pub. Uh, now, when I say DJ, all that really means is I would pop in one compact disc. Um, the kids will have to look that up. Uh, it's <laughs> one section of the cd player and then i would basically learn how to do it on the other side and i would literally just kind of switch it over and i'd play songs all night at uh, at the bar but it was it was a fun way to 
to, uh, uh, to, you know, to have a job in my final year of university there. So there you go. There's, I used to be a DJ. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So would it be fair to say, is it, is it, do you got some great dance moves in through all the DJ? Uh, no, no, no. I absolutely, no. you know, going to the pop <laughs> reference, I, you know, I know what my lane is and I stay in it. Um, okay. You're only going to find me dancing at weddings. And it's usually, you know, uh, uh, after a couple of, um, uh, you know, cocktails. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's like the scene from uh, from Hitch when Will Smith is working with Kevin James and he's like, no, no, yeah. you're going to stay in this square right here. This is where you live. So, you know, I'm not going to be doing the Q-tip or the sprinkler anytime soon. Okay. I love it. I love it, coach. So I'm curious, coach, you know, sport has obviously played an important role for you in your life, right? You, you were a successful athlete and you've transitioned into coaching, right? Both football and, and in the health and wellness space. I'm curious, what has been the biggest life lesson that sport has taught you that you still find yourself applying to your life today? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that if I could put it in one word, it would be adaptation. Um, you know, sports is a, is a live, uh, is a live drama that we don't know the, uh, we don't know the script, how it goes. So we constantly have to adapt and be prepared uh, to do that. So, you know, when you're a player uh, and you're young, you know, you're learning basic skills and you're learning how to, um, you know, understand the game, you know, for speaking about football specifically, it's just understanding, you know, why would a team run this play? What are their strengths? You know, you start watching film uh, you start asking coaches questions about, you know, that film based using their knowledge base and their experience to, to, uh, you know, understand what we can expect to happen or what we can surmise will happen. But, you know, then comes game day and maybe it's not what we're expecting and we have to adapt. Right. And so I think that that's, um, that's the biggest thing that I took from the game is that it's, um, you know, you need to prepare for life. You need to prepare for your job. You need to prepare for all your relationships and, and, uh, and sport, but at the same time, understand that it's never going to be that, you know, we've seen, I think we've all seen that, that graph of what success means and it's never that straight line. It's always kind of like this. And so we need to, to adapt and use what we know to be able to, uh, you know, take that next step forward in order to, to, um, to be successful or to, uh, you know, continue that path to success. I love that simple idea, right, around adaptability. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, like you shared that analogy of, you know, a lot of people have been led to believe that success, like you said, is a linear path, right? It's all straight up. But as we both know, it's filled with twists, turns, pivots, detours, all those fun things. Uh, so I'm curious with you, you know, you've obviously played with, you've worked with so many high performers, right, on and off the football field. I'm curious, like that ability to be adaptable, is that a common characteristic with, with high performers? Uh, you know, I believe it is. Uh, I, again, I, I've been finding myself listening to more audiobooks lately just to, to save myself some time as I'm working out or as I'm you know, driving up to, uh, to the University of Guelph. And so uh, a lot of it, I've been listening to a lot of Bill Belichick and Tom Brady stuff lately and listening to their paths. And, um, you know, at, at that level of uh, football, you, you know, at the professional level, especially in the, the multi-billion dollar industry that the NFL is, um, you, you have to be prepared uh, come Sunday or come, you know, wildcard weekend or whatever for anything that the opposing team is going to throw at you. Um, now, that being said, again, the if, if what you're expecting doesn't happen, well, what are you going to do? Are you just going to shut down and be like, well, I didn't, I didn't see this coming? Or is it okay, let's review what we just saw and think about, okay, how can we prepare for this for the next step? So, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of going back to what you said earlier about speaking about my own path. You know, I, I never really considered myself somebody when I was coming out of high school. Um, I didn't really start lifting until I was 18 years old. Um, and that was because I started getting recruited by certain schools due to my size. I was 6'4", 250. Um, you know, looking at myself on tape as somebody that now evaluates high school athletes, I probably wouldn't have recruited myself outside of the okay. fact that I was 6'4", 250. Yeah. Um, but um, but the, the, the thing is, as I started learning those skills and started learning how to, how to you know, look at film and whatnot, I started realizing, okay, I think I might have a goal of trying to reach to the next level and, and play in the CFL. And a lot of athletes, you know, say that, but then are they, are they willing to do the work? And so, you know, my path to success, it did have those kind of speed bumps as we went. Um, you know, we weren't, I think we only had one, maybe two successful seasons uh, at St. FX uh, out in the AUS. Um, we lost in the, in the Loney Bowl uh, twice. Um, 
uh, quite considerably. So that was tough to to overcome as well. But it was it was in terms of adaptability, it was trying to learn from those those failures. You know, um, the games do end, and if you're not successful, obviously you are a failure at that point. And uh, for me, it was like, okay, let's not call it a failure. Let's just call it let's call it feedback. Like, what can we learn from this loss? What could I have done better? What could I have done better? Uh, physically, what could I have done better as a captain on the team? How could I have prepared my team better, uh, et cetera, et cetera, moving down the road? But so, um, for me, uh, yeah, it's, it's I'm coming back to the point of adaptability, but um, you know, it, it's just not it's not giving up and just accepting um, where you're at as as finite. Like, there's always another way that you can do something, and it's just go through as many solutions as you can until you find, you know, how you can make that graph go back up. You know, coach, what, what I really love about what you shared is I, I heard a couple ideas was one around this idea of how you talked about results as just being feedback, right? Like really just getting a snapshot of where you are at this point in time. So I guess my question to you is, why do you believe that that's so important to simply look at results as feedback as opposed to judging things maybe, you know, and this is again, that fine balance between, you know, judging things as good or bad, positive or negative, but simply just looking at feedback and then being able to prompt yourself with questions like, yeah, what can I do better? Like, you know, is, is that, do you find that that's an important part of the process? Uh, absolutely. Um... You know, I, I feel like uh, memories and uh, as you refer to them, nuggets of information, they're, they're kind of like, you know, little, little marbles. Um, uh, you know, I, I think there was a, in uh, 2015, there was a movie Inside Out. It was a cartoon and it had to yeah. do with emotions and, uh, um, you know, um, and it was, it was, it was quite an emotional movie actually, but it had to do with these little marbles. So I have these little nuggets of memories as I go in and one of them actually is Guelph, Dennis McPhee, he was the head coach of St. FX and he originally recruited me out there um, in 2003. And so uh, one of the lessons I learned right away in college when we were reviewing film um, is that you can win a game 63 nothing, or you can lose a game 63 nothing, and the film is never going to be as good or as bad as you think it is, right? Yeah. So you can win the game 63 nothing and be like, yeah, all right, great. Let's, you know, coach is going to say I did a great job on this play and that play, but then we're going to look at the things that said, okay, well, could we have won even more? Um, did, did we run the right plays? Did we run the right coverages? Did you go in the right gap? Uh, did you get off the ball quicker, right? Whereas, you know, if you if you lose the game 63 nothing, you can look at it and say, okay, well, this is what you did well here. This is what, um, you know, we did all of these things properly. And if we had just tweaked these one or two things, then maybe we would have come, uh, you know, come out a, a little bit better on the on the defensive side of things. So, uh, again, it was one of those things that Coach said early on. It was, uh, it's never as good or as bad as it, yeah. as it seems. And so feedback comes in both forms, right? Feedback is both positive and negative. Um, and then it's just like, what do you do? It's what you do with that information after that that is mm -hmm. most important. Yeah, I, I, I love your your insight into that. And, and what I really heard from you again was, was two things. One, how we are so programmed to live from the outside in, right? To allow things outside of us, you know, like you, you mentioned that score, 63 nothing, how that can sometimes skew, you know, our perception of what's actually going on. And, and then what I really love that you talked about is, you know, shifting the focus inside out. Right. And, and I love that you made that reference. Actually, my daughter actually asked us if we could watch that movie. So <laughs> funny how that happens. And, and it all comes back to what you mentioned a few minutes earlier, like the power of questions and, and why that resonates with me so much is I have a, a great coach and mentor who talks about this idea of the quality of your questions determine the quality of your life. And are you willing to ask yourself those tough questions sometimes? Right. So, so I'm really curious from you that learning about the power of questions, because it sounds like you ask yourself and you do a lot of self-reflection. Is that something you've always done? Or is that some, something that you were just, uh, you know, taught by a great coach or mentor? Yeah. Uh, I think I've had great, um, you know, great coaches and great mentors in my life. Um, I can think of, you know, two specifically that I would say helped, you know, shape me uh, to be the person that I am right now. And, uh, it, you know, again, I'll just refer to him because I've known Coach McPhee since 2003 and now we're working together as colleagues. Um, you know, he taught me a lot of uh, lessons and continues to uh, to do so. Uh, 
uh, as we go here, as I continue to develop as, as um, you know, a, a sport coach versus just a, a strength and conditioning coach. And so uh, for me, it's just, it's just that there's, it's almost having the curiosity of a child, right? Like I mentioned, I, I you know, I have a boy that's, that's going to be turning two in March. And uh, I, I know that the questions are coming. The why, 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 over and over again. So it's just, it's just, you know, it's never finite having that answer. Um, and so, you know, when I, when I first went into university, I can't remember, I think it was a friend of mine that um, uh, ended up winning a Vanier cup at, um, uh, at Laurier in 2004, uh, we were looking at this book called Mind Gym, and it was by Gary Mack, and I forget the other author's name is uh, David something, uh, and it all had to do with just the mentality of sport and understanding that it's not just the physical actions, but it's it's you know how you how you see things, how you approach things, and so I think that started my my path to um, wanting to learn more about mindsets. Um, I really enjoy. Uh, reading books about interesting people like uh, I, I just read one about Robin Williams, Steve Jobs, and just understanding how they saw the world a little bit differently and how they asked their questions in order to be able to become the, the you know, the massive, massive successes that they were. And so uh, for me, it's just, it, it comes down to, there's always going to be more questions to ask. And it's just asking at the right, right time in the right order to kind of get that next, uh, that next level answer for you to become, um, you know, a better person, a better player, et cetera. I love that simple reminder, Coach, and, and what I really heard from you, again, is, is the power of asking questions from a place of curiosity, right, where I think it's really easy to ask questions from a place of judgment, where when you can reframe that and really just have, like you said, that curious mind, that beginner's mind, like a child's like mind, as you talked about it, it, it it's just interesting how, how much lighter life feels. Yeah. So I'm curious with you, I, I know you're a big proponent, like I think one of the things that really drew me to you to, to reach out and have a conversation is, is your commitment to lifelong learning, right? Like I know you're someone who values education. I'm curious, you know, you're working at, at the U sport level. Why do you believe that, that education and being that true lifelong learner is so important, especially in the 21st century? Um, great question. I mean, I think, you know, before we started, um, you know, uh, hitting the live button here, we were discussing technology and how it's ever adapting, right? Like, you know, five years from now, you could be doing this podcast and we're using hologram technology for all we know, right? So, so it's, it's just kind of trying to stay on the cutting edge, but using the lessons of our past in order to be able to, um, you know, again, come back to that word, adapt, uh, adapt to the future. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. Okay. Well, it's interesting, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? Your background in, in undergrad was history, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. Great. Memory. Yeah. Well, and, and you know that comes down to research, right? Like, so, so yeah. what that taught me, you know, you never. I went. I I went to um, Saint Effects because they had a great history program there, and and I had a, a teacher in high school that just really gave me a love of history. I loved looking at the past and uh, and learning from the past so that the same mistakes are not done in the future. And again, that, that transfers to sport, that transfers to life. And so that's something that I wanted to do um, at the university level. So I did my BA in history at St. FX and then pursued my master's at the University of Waterloo afterwards. And, um, you know, what I didn't really have a plan. Like, what am I going to do with a history degree? You know, after I graduate, right? am I going to become a teacher, a librarian? Do I want to be a professor at university? Um, and what it's really helped me do over the last, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 years in the strength and conditioning industry is it, it's helped me done, do more research. And it helps me do more research by uh, reading books, asking the right questions, websites, connecting with people uh, of all walks and getting their perspectives on things and taking, like you say, the little nuggets from everybody and kind of making it into my own philosophy there. So what, you know, what I'm thankful for with my degrees is I learned how to properly research information uh, and ask the questions to kind of get the answers that I wanted to with that childlike, you know, curiosity um, mm -hmm. until I was satisfied that I had, you know, reached a level of understanding about that particular topic so that I can move on to the next thing. You know, coach, what I love about that, and it's probably, again, coming from a background in education was, you know, looking at history simply from a place of facts, right? Like just to, to learn really about, you know, what happened, you know, what was the outcome of it? And I love that you mentioned that, okay, so now I'm going to internalize it and then I'm going to start to make more informed decisions, right? Moving forward. So I'm curious from you, 
Um, what has that process been like for you where you're sort of combining the, this passion? Like you said, you have, you know, your history, your, your background in taking history taught you how to, how to research, how to, how to be able to analyze and observe, but then combining it with this childlike curiosity to constantly grow and evolve. What has that process been like for you? Uh, it's just, it's just ongoing. Um, I find if I'm not engaged in some sort of an online course, or if I don't have a book on the go, um, or articles, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of good information out there. There's a lot of bad information out there. So it doesn't just come at a point where you read, you know, one book and you take that, that book as being complete fact. And that was a lesson I learned when I was doing my master's because history is basically written by, I think there's a saying that history is, is written by the winners, right? Or yeah. by the successful. Um, but there are two different parts of history. It depends on who you, who you, uh, you know, who you talk to. Um, for example, you can talk to, it goes back to the game is never, or the tape is never as good or as bad as you, you look at. Um, you know, one person could suggest that a specific game was good because of this. And then another person could say a specific game was bad uh, because of that. The lesson I learned was when I was at the University of Waterloo, um, I was tasked with a sort of an art, art, artsy type of project in order to, uh, um, uh, for a particular class. And the idea that I had was to, uh, my family all came from Poland. Um, uh, my father came from Poland, my mother came from Poland and they met here. Uh, but I was always curious. I had heard stories about how my father's family had come through Poland um, uh, during times where they were under Soviet rule. And so there was a whole escape um, you know, faction to it. So the, the purpose of my, uh, my project was I wanted to hear the perspective of my grandparents. I wanted to hear the perspective of my aunt, who was, uh, you know, a teenager at the time. I wanted to hear the perspective of my father. And I wanted to do it separately, asking them the same questions, because this type of history was not written down. And so if the history is not written down by, by anybody, what's your perspective of that history? What is that linear line that all three parties involved were able to um, say, yes, this happened, and then this is a part of history, but then maybe that, you know, one person goes off track, and they mention one thing that maybe another person remembers a little bit differently, and so the interesting thing for me is, is, is I might be able to read a book about Steve's jobs, Steve Jobs, excuse me, by, um, you know, by, by uh, Isaac Williamson, or I think is his name, but that's one person's perspective. Now I got to yeah. read another article or another uh, book about that same person and see, okay, well, was that all factual truth or did they miss something or were they putting their own opinion uh, and perspective on it? And so, um, you know, is it, can it be deemed obsessive a little bit? I, I don't think so. I, I think obsession is, is um, it's not a bad word. I think it's a word that, that leads to drive. And so for me, it's, you know, again, it, came, it, came, it comes down to like my first thought. Um, I, I just want to know things. So I'll flip on Jeopardy once in a while and I'll do great in the first round and in the second round, I just bomb, but I want to know things. <laughs> I love that. I love how you mentioned Jeopardy. I'll, I'll share with you. One of the things I've always, one of my dreams is to always get the final Jeopardy question, right? It's, it, it has, hasn't happened yet, but that is kind of one of those, those secret desires that I have. So, which interesting enough, my son has a curious mind as well. And he's all about Jeopardy. Can we watch Jeopardy? Now you have the pressure of how much do you wager, right? Because then you have yeah. added pressure on there. Are you walk yeah. away with something or are you you going all in? It's all part of the question. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, again, when I'm from the comfort of my house, I, I'm all in. So I, I like to think, you know, eh, put, let it all ride. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All or nothing. All or nothing. So, so I'm curious, you know, you bring up an interesting point around this idea of questions. And what I want to share with you is just an experience that I had. So my background's in phys ed and kinesiology. And I remember my last few years in education, I really felt like a square peg in a round hole. I was just my, I had started to really embrace personal growth, self-development in my own life. And I really just wanted to teach these valuable lessons to students. So anyways, I had this project with our grade 12 kinesiology class. Let's, let's design the, the, the optimal athlete. They could choose their sport. And we just said from the inside out, we're going to build it from the inside out. And I had never gone there. And I told him, hey, this, I have no idea how this is going to go. Some parts are going to work great. Some are going to bomb. And that's cool. We'll do it together. And I remember saying, here's what I want you to do for the first start. What are five questions that you have? And I taught at a school that was very academic right? Like you talk about, you know, this is a top school provincially. And I remember it was very interesting to observe how some learners 
thought this was amazing. They were just like asking questions. Like you could see, and very often it was some of my disengaged students that were like the one, oh my gosh, like I just want to go with this. I had some of the more traditionally like successful, like 90 plus students that were really struggling to come up with five questions. So can you tell me what five questions? So I guess my question to you is, where do you think the gap is? Because again, I know you're someone like me, you're naturally curious. Why do you believe that the questioning process is, is a challenge for so many people? Um, I mean, I think it comes with their upbringing, right? It comes with the, I've mentioned that I've had coaches and mentors and teachers in the past that have shaped me and, and it, um, you know, influenced me and uh, coerced me at times to become the person that I am. And so I think it depends on, you know, uh, it depends on your parents and how you're brought up. It depends on your family. It depends on your friends. It depends on teachers. Um, to your point, like you read a very high end school, it depends on the school and the district and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I always like using the, um, it's interesting when you're recruiting high school athletes and you're trying to create a team uh, as I'm learning um, in my process here, it, it's that some some high school athletes may be playing a sport for the sake of saying, hey, I'm playing the sport, I'm on the team and you know, they might be on the end of the bench, but they got a jersey and they can tell all their friends and all that. Some of them actually are next level athletes and want to, uh, you know, play at the next level. And so when they're recruited now, when you bring all these, you know, best players from the teams together on one team, it, it is, uh, you know, a series of 100 like minded individuals for the most part that are kind of taking it to that next level um, with a similar goal with a common goal in mind. Um, and I think that. Uh, if we're talking about the gap, like where does the gap exist there? Well, you know, you're taking all those individual players and making them a team, but those individual players all probably have a similar uh, commonality in their upbringing, whether it was, you know, uh, a good experience with a coach or a teacher. Um, um, and then sometimes it might just come down to just just having the, the what's the proper word, um, the humbleness to be able to say, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to the question, but I want to know, and I'm not going to feel like I'm dumb for not asking the question. Um, I, I want to know the answer and I'm going to admit, I don't know the answer. Sometimes I have, you know, my athletes say, Hey coach, why are we doing this? And I'll explain it. And they, they'll say, you know, what about, what if we did it this way? Or have you ever heard of this? And I'll say, no, never heard of that. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about the strength and conditioning industry. Um, and so I'll go and I'll research that for myself. And I'll say, listen, this is based on my experience and based on what I read, this is what I found. Uh, thanks for bringing it to my attention. Is something else I can add to the toolbox now or say, you know, this isn't really uh, for us. So for me, I want to say that I'm, I'm two words that I've, I've used a lot in my life are humble and hungry. Um, I'm humble enough to know that I don't know everything and uh, but I'm hungry enough to continue to want to um, to know and to get better uh, for myself mentally, physically, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting that you talked about, you know, that humble and hungry, and I love, and I love those words, right? Like it really, again, uh, and what I really heard from you again was that idea, like it takes a certain level of calm and confidence, right? To be able to say, yeah, I, I don't know, but hey, I'm going to do what it takes to find the answer for you. So from your experience that, that humble or hungry, would you say that that is a separator for you know the high performers if we're speaking let's say in, in a youth sport football being being that is is that a separator between you know the athletes because by the time they get to you they're they're the best athletes from their school for their high schools and now they're going here is that the separator like that the ability to be humble and hungry uh, I think that's part of it. I wouldn't say it's the entire thing, but it's definitely part of it. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, when we started off the reminder about the mind is a parachute. And uh, it reminds me of a lesson that I learned um, about about the open mindset, um, you know, as mentioned by Carol Dweck in her book, mm -hmm. Mindset. Uh, and it has to do with having the open mindset versus the cl closed mindset. The open mindset being that you're open to criticism, you're open to feedback, um, and that you'll take it with understanding that it's not meant to be, um, you know, a personal attack on you, but rather um, it depends on who's giving it to you, but it's, it's meant to be something that's that's helping you to get a little bit better. And so I remember specifically this, this one lesson that I learned, I was, um, we were in the process of teaching a, a new course having to do with barbells and strength training with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, a company that I was working for maybe five or six years ago. And so we were all doing the training with each other and we were presenting to each other. And so I spent all night looking at my section and how did I want to do it? And I threw in some quirks and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, I taught my section and I thought I did great. 
right? And as soon as I was done, I was like, okay, give me my praise. Give me my praise. I want to know about this now, right? And and all of these similar high-level trainers all started giving me more feedback than praise. And at that point, I had a closed mindset. I didn't understand the difference between the two. I was looking for praise and tell me how great I did so that I can feel good about myself. But instead, what I got was feedback, um, which made me feel like I didn't do a good job, even though in my head, I thought I did. There were just elements of my presentation that I did for them that could have been better, um, that could have been done better, and suggestions were made so that when we actually perform it to the class, uh, you know, and people are paying for it, that it can be done a little bit more organically, similar to the conversation that we're having here. So that was a big thing for me is understanding that, um, you know, any sort of feedback that you get for the most part is not meant to be um, a personal attack, but rather, uh, you know. A, a suggestion on what could be considered behavior or ability or something of that note and to take that and say, okay, yeah, this is one person's perspective. Now let, let me go through my own philosophy, through my own brain and see if that connects with me. And okay, well, what can I do then based on that information to make it a little bit better next time, regardless of if it's sport or presentations or conversations or cooking, I mean, it could be anything, right? Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you shared that because I know that was something when Coach Shehan and I talked in the huddle, he talked about that as well, the importance of being open to feedback. So I guess my curiosity goes to, can you teach someone to have that open mind? Because, you know, it's interesting. Like, I love that you shared that, you know, at that moment in time, you know, there's a bit more of a closed mind and, and we've all been there, right? We're, we're, you know, we all have that closed mind. I guess my question always goes back to, is there anything that, we can do as coaches to really help people open up that mind a little bit, to open up that parachute a little bit? Like, has anything, do you find anything has worked from your lived experience? Yeah, I, I think I think we're doing it right now. I think we're sharing our information and our experience and, you know, what you choose to do with that as somebody that's listening to podcasts or watching, you know, the, the live show is, is, you know, are you writing down, you know, I've mentioned probably five or six books by now. Are you writing those down and are you going to look into them and see, hey, maybe this book is for me, maybe it's not for me. Um, as a coach, um, what I have found personally uh, from both the strength and conditioning side of things, as well as uh, as being a position coach now and something that I've continued to learn is that is that you want to be open about how you're coaching and and why you're um, why you're saying what you're saying, but at the same time there has to be a a, a radical candor and a bluntness to um, uh, to the feedback that you're giving. So on the one hand, I want to be able to tell, for for example, my defensive end, um, you know. Uh, I'm thinking of a particular incident right now, but I want to be able to tell my defensive end, Hey, you did a great job with this, but you could have done uh, better with that. Now how they take that in knowing me as a coach is okay. Well, are they going to say, well, what does this coach know? He's only been coaching, you know, defensive line for a year. Right. Or could they be saying, well, this coach has actually been, you know, playing the sport for over two decades, or excuse me, has been in the sport for over two decades now and is continuing to learn. So how they choose to take that information is important and how you relay it is, is just as important. I don't believe in sugarcoating things. Um, I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's valuable, nor is it, um, uh, nor is it fair, um, mm -hmm. to athletes. Um, I think maybe, you know, as coaches, we have to be a little more careful these days with how we say things and, uh, you know, just given the, the, the state of the world and, you know, the state of mental health and how it's become such a big, um, um, focus for, for us as coaches now and as people, but, um, it goes back to kind of being a little a little blunt, but being like careful about how you say it and just being direct with your feedback, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Be direct, be clear, be concise and understand that it's not meant to be, um, um, it's, it's not a personal attack. It's a means to uh, help you improve. I love that. And, and what I really heard from you again was the importance of that clear, concise communication, right? Like speak so clearly that a 10 year old could understand. And the other idea that as you were sharing, which really got me starting to think was, you know, coming from a coaching background, I know I have a tendency to coach. So again, great when I'm on field, great when I'm working with my clients, my 11 year old and eight year old, not always the most effective tool. So I have found, you know, especially with my son, I've asked him, would it, you know, can I give you some feedback or would it be okay if I share it? And just that prompting him with that question, has has really forced me to again sort of cool the jets a little bit sometimes he says yes sometimes he's like no 
And I find just giving them permission and, and I'm a little more candid with some of my coaching clients, right? Like, hey, do you want the honest truth or would you like me to sugarcoat it? But I find giving people permission to, if they're open to accepting that feedback, I found, like you said, most people, they do want the honest feedback because I think we live in a world sometimes that likes to sugarcoat things. And I think people, most people just want to figure out, okay, how can this help me grow? How can this help me do better? So that's what came up for me as you were sharing. Yeah. Um, I, I think the permission thing is huge. Uh, being able to involve, especially, I mean, you know, you, you're mentioning uh, your children, you're mentioning your children and we're talking about, you know, adults as well. But uh, I've learned over my time just working with different populations that, you know, people don't like being told what to do, especially yeah. adults. They like being involved in the process. So, uh, you know, saying, hey, do you mind if I ask if, if I give you a piece of feedback just from my perspective? I, I've almost never seen somebody say no to that. Um, and then again, you can say what you want to say based on your perspective. They've given you permission. Now what they choose to do with it is completely up to them. Uh, you know, it goes with your clientele, it goes with your children, it goes with, uh, with athletes, it goes with athletes in the gym. Um, it, it's, it's, it comes back to, you know, knowledge is power, but the application of that knowledge is what's actually powerful. So, so I'm curious, coach, you know, these last couple of years, right, have been an interesting time in human history. Um, and as I was saying at the beginning of, of our call, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that to count your blessings, right, it just feels better. So, so I'm, I'm curious, like, what has been your biggest learning, your, your biggest growth during this interesting time in human history the last couple of years? Um, yeah, there's no, there's no playbook on what we're doing. Right. Uh, every day, every, you know, every uh, press conference is a different time to adapt. And so uh, for me, it was very interesting coming into being the, uh, the Griffins football um, strength and condition coach. Um, uh, you come in in 2019 and you have all these ideas of what you want to do in the off season and then a pandemic starts and then it's like, OK, now what do we do? What are uh, I, you know, I have always found um, the, the serenity prayer to be something that I, I can adapt to. Um, uh, my life all encompassing and it's something I try to pass along and, and it's uh, you know how does it go grant me the serenity to um, uh, to know the things I cannot change I, I'm, I'm pulling a, a, a President Bush here but it's uh, yeah grant me the wisdom to know the things I cannot change uh, yeah totally blanking out here I have it on my phone I'm going to pull this up here I have, I'm I'm okay to say that I I'm okay to say that <laughs> how it goes Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And so what can we change, you know, currently during this COVID lifestyle? You know, we bring a, a, a young boy into the world and, you know, you have to adapt. And how much can you see family and how often do you see people? And, you know, when we didn't know what, you know, COVID was and now we're understanding a little bit more about it. And so now you can adapt even more. Can you open up your family doors a little bit more, you know, uh, not to get into that whole conversation, but. Um, there was no playbook on it and there was no playbook on how to be a, a strength coach either. So we went with bodyweight workouts and then slowly, um, you know, we adapted into go to your garage and find something heavy and now let's lift that. And here's a program for you there. And then the Griffin football program purchased, you know, 50 TRX units and we handed those out to the players so that they had something that they could use with there. And so now I feel with this particular lockdown time that we're in, we're a little bit better prepared and the athletes have weights in their garages and in their basements. And, you know, they're, they're able to do their strength training and they're doing what's in their ability to, um, to do what's ever in their power right now and to know the difference of what they can and cannot do. So. I love it. And, and I just love how you're sharing how you as a staff are adjusting, right. In order to help and serve your athletes. The one thing that really piqued my interest, right. Was, was you talked about surrender. And it's interesting because sometimes, you know, especially in the world of high performance sport, you know, there's, it's almost like we don't talk about things like that, right? Like surrender, you know, my word for this year for 2022 is all around peace. And for me, peace is about learning to trust that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. Like I'm supposed to be here, right? Focus on our conversation. So I'm curious with you, why do you think it's, well, I guess, let me preface this one. Do you think it's important to remind ourselves like to surrender, right? To, to, to trust. Like, do you think that those words are important reminders, especially during uncertain times like we're experiencing right now? 
Uh, I think I think it's it's an interesting way to put it. Um, I don't think that just kind of like a blind belief or a blind just kind of yeah, I'm just going to go with the flow type of thing. Again, it, once again, it comes down to questions. It's questioning, you know, questioning things that you're being told that you're being asked to do, and just and and um, again coming to to a decision about it yourself. So I think in certain aspects, it's interesting to be like, you know, what I'm not the best at this, so I'll step back and and I'll let somebody else okay. do it. Um, but it depends on, uh, again, it's just information. It's taking yeah. the information and learning and then creating your own philosophy around certain things. Mm. I love it. I love it. I, again, and, and that's where I kind of see that curious mind, right? Like one of your well-formed habits is this idea of like you're constantly asking questions, right? And just asking like, oh, okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? So again, that, yeah, it's, that's it's, awesome. it's, it's just... It's just, it's just as soon as you think you know everything, that, that tells you that you know nothing, right? So it, it's these yeah. little quotes and stuff that I have in my head that stay consistent with me. It just, it, it's just, uh, it's that continuous um, quest for knowing the next thing or becoming better in whatever aspect of my life I'm looking at. Uh, you know, currently I'm spending more time um, trying to become a better sport coach for the team for the upcoming season, specifically on the defensive line, right? And I do that by reviewing film. I do that by asking the defensive coordinator questions who has over 30 years of coaching experience and, and taking that experience with me. I do it by reading books. I do it by listening to podcasts. I do it by listening to audio books and, and reading more books and looking at old playbooks and looking back at my old film and seeing how the game is adapted and understanding the U Sports League and understanding how Canada West is a little bit different than the AUS and looking at previous yeah. results. So it's just, it's just a continuous thing. Right. And, and, and I'm never going to know everything. And I understand that. Yeah. And there's always going to be something else to ask. It's asking, you know, a head coach will, you know, respectfully, obviously, why was a decision made to, to do what we did in a specific game? Or why was a decision made for the program that you did that way or a defensive coordinator for that matter? Um, or even a recruit that chooses not to go to your school. It's like, can I get some feedback on, you know, was it the program? Was it uh, the academic side of things? So, um, it, it can be maybe annoying asking that many questions, but if you do it, if you do it in a proper way, I suppose it's, it's, uh, it can come off as innocent, like a job. <laughs> Coach, I, I, I can appreciate where you're coming from because like you, I, I feel like the ability to ask questions, um, I don't know. I, I find it such a driver for me that like you said, it, it can take you to some beautiful places. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, I have been, I've been, you know, a fan of your podcast for quite some time. And yeah. the, th the thing I'm seeing is that the, the scope of people that you've had on this podcast, I, yeah. I, I find that I have a ton of connections. You know, you had Jonathan Hood on there, who was a teammate yeah. of mine. Uh, yeah. You've had Steve Snyder, the current head coach of Queens, who was my quarterback when I was at St. Effects. Chris Bertoya, your first guest was my offensive line coach when I was yeah. at St. Effects. You know, obviously all the, the Guelph staff with Coach Bone and Coach yeah. Carter and Coach Shane, you've had them all on there. So it's just a really neat connection of people that I'm seeing that, um, you know, I've taken something from all of those people throughout the last couple of decades and uh and have made it into my own self and you know i continue to stay in touch with them every time we play queens um you know uh, i'm there with uh, coach jose and coach um uh, snyder because we were all teammates and it's nice to just say hey, how you doing you know it's been quite some time it's nice to see how successful we've all become and that we're still um trying to uh play and coach football at high levels and pass along what we've learned over our time to to the next generation and hopefully have an influence on them to maybe want to do that down the road uh for somebody else mm. well thank you coach I, I really do appreciate the feedback one of the interesting parts is and someone asked me once like wanted to know all the technical stuff about podcasts like how do you choose it i'm like i just want to talk to people that pique my interest that like, I feel like I'm learning more from you, right? Like, I just want to talk to interesting people who I want to learn from. So it's just interesting how that curiosity just to talk to interesting people and people that, you know, just, I don't know, just inspire me and push me to be better. That, that, that's where the inspiration behind everything was. You're always going to, you're always going to find if in any conversation, hopefully you can take that one thing, um, you know, that one that one nugget, that one uh, memory marble or whatever, and, and be able to apply it to yourself and be like, okay, I didn't know that before. That's, that's interesting. And now you have another connection. Uh, you know, we, like we said, we've been talking for, for well over a year now and, yeah. and uh, uh, I've always enjoyed our conversations. And every time you post something new, it's like, yeah, I like that, you know, and then you hit the like button and it's not just for the sake of getting likes. Yeah. It's like, I want to, I want to be able to save that. And I want to be able to use that myself down the future, um, you know, because I thought it was a great thought or, or a great thing that you said there. So 
Uh, I really appreciate everything that you do. And, and I think this is a, a fantastic thing that you're doing for, um, for all walks of people, coaches, high school players, university players, or anybody that just needs, uh, you know, to be able to, to figure out how to connect with people on a, on a larger basis. So uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you, coach. So I have one last question for you. You know, one of my purposes in life is I just love, you know, finding out what makes people tick, you know, what inspires them, what puts that pre-kickoff fire in the belly. So I know that one of the best ways is really stretching people, really getting them to think in possibilities. So I'm curious for you, you know, you're obviously someone who, who has a curious mind that is always going to be driven to learn and grow and adapt. What would 10Xing, like your vision, your goals, your, your life, I'm curious, like, what would that look like to you? Uh, just, you mean, in, in increasing kind of like uh, expanding what I do right now? Yeah, like, you know, I guess what, what comes up for you as I say that, like, it could be health, relationships, you know, business as a coach. I don't know. I'm just like, what would 10xing your life look like, brother? You know, I, I just, I just think that having an impact on other people's lives is important. And, you know, uh, if, you, if we're talking about school and, and um, uh, uh, excuse me, if we're talking about like uh, athletes in football specifically, like, I would just like to see that, you know, the relationships that I'm, I'm creating and fostering now are some that, that can continue down the road and that, uh, you know, maybe down the road, somebody can say, uh, you know, Hey coach, you, you know, you did this to me, or you, you said this to me once, once upon a time. And that's something that really, you know, changed the way I thought things. And, you know, I, I'm not the type of guy that, um, looks for praise. I'm not the type of guy that I don't like to market myself. If you ever follow me on social media, it's always about the team <laughs> and the program for me. So you'll yeah. rarely see pictures of myself on there. Um, <laughs> So, so for me, I just, I enjoy being a humble servant to uh, the people that I work with, um, the people that I work for. And if I can be of any influence to them whatsoever, just taking the, um, the life experience that I've had and be able to apply that to somebody else and help make a little change in their world. Then to me, I think that's, that's uh, 10xing things for me. It means that you've had uh, an effect on one person and you've helped them out and you know, in turn that that's going to help out somebody else in it. So it has a, a massive ripple effect in terms of, um, um, you know, um, just, just being a good person, being a good coach. And, and I think that's very important in today's day and age. Okay. So it sounds like impact. It's all about impact, baby. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, just, just, just having an impact, having an influence and, uh, um, you know, it, it goes back to what you said about purpose, like what's your purpose in life? I've, I've, I've known, I've seen, and as I, as I get older, I, 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 analyze my own life and see that I've been asked to be a captain of, of uh, a lot of teams. And it wasn't because I was the most talented, but there was a, a, another factor that perhaps was there that um, coaches um, saw in me. And so I wondered what was that? And it came down to some sort of a, a purpose. And for me, I think the purpose was, was leadership and to help lead people and to try to help point them in the right direction so that they can be um, successful. So um I, I feel like, and it comes down to my purpose. My purpose is to serve, to be humble, and to help uh, people just get better. I love it, brother. And again, the more we share, the more we have this conversation. I, I see it. like attracts like, right? It's the law of vibration. So I love everything you're sharing. So, coach, I am curious, you know, what can we do to help and, and support you right now? I know you said you, 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 you're that humble servant. Is there anything people can do to yeah, support what you're growing? Um, you know, we, we're we're pretty fortunate right now that we've uh, we've opened up our um, our new performance center with inside the stadium there. So that's something that we're going to be uh, looking at in terms of uh, uh, opening up to the community and specifically to the to the youth in our community to be able to use. Um, goes back to that impact statement that we just said. Uh, I want to teach um, high school athletes for now, uh, or high school just uh, you know um, um, uh, students, uh, how to live healthier lives. Um, the last two years have been tough. Um, I mentioned I hadn't started working out until I was 18 years old. And I feel like a lot of uh, athletes and players are way ahead of the game. Now they start training at 13 and 14. And so it's great on them, but are they doing the right things? Um, and just right now, again, with, with, with the amount of, um, uh, time that we've been kind of having to stay inside and not being able to use gyms and be healthy in, in that particular sense of the word, I think it's important to be able to, to jumpstart that. So it's a project that I'm taking on, uh, okay. along with the football staff of, um, uh, trying to open up this uh, performance center uh, outside of varsity training hours to be able to um, engage our Guelph community and be able to um, 
you know, uh, teach younger uh, athletes how to uh, how to lift properly, how to move properly, and how to be healthy as they as they go on to uh, uh, you know the next part of their lives. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that sense of community. And that's definitely something coach I, I've seen and I'm feeling really from you and the entire football program there is, is coming to the community. And on a side note, I'm really enthused to come see the facility because there are lots of my, my kin, the kin geek in me is like, Oh my gosh, that is such a cool piece of machinery that that's such a cool function. Yeah. So you've definitely, my kin brain is going. <laughs> no, we, would, we would love to have Ontario football there and you specifically we're, yeah. we're planning on having an open house when, uh, you know, when we're able to do so and, and to do it right. We want to have that big event yeah. when it's, uh, you know, when it's safe to do so, um, yeah. as opposed to just kind of having a bunch of mini events. So we'd like to do things right and, and we'll do it when, when the, the proper time comes. So you'll definitely get your invite. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, coach. Hey, coach, uh, I really want to take a moment to acknowledge you. Uh, I want to take a moment just to acknowledge you for the man you are, you know, the great husband, the great dad, you know, the great son, the great teacher, coach, the great mentor, but most importantly, the great human being you are. The one thing I've really gained from our conversation is, again, the power of a curious mind. Like, like the power in, in asking questions from a place of curiosity and, and where are all the beautiful places it can take you. So I just want to thank you for that simple reminder and just for you always inspiring me to push to, to adapt and, and become better myself. So thank you for that, Coach. Thank you, JT. I'm, I'm humbled by what you say. Like I said, I'm not one to, to chase praise, so it doesn't come that often. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's all good. So, folks. Coach dropped so many valuable nuggets of wisdom. But as we both mentioned in the huddle, knowledge is potential power. It's the consistent and focused application of that great knowledge that actually creates great results. So my challenge to you is take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom and go apply it to your life today. And that is how you will reach, start to reach your next level of greatness. My last reminder, as I, as I tell you every week in the huddle, is you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. Thank you so much for joining me again. I look forward to chatting with you next time in the, the huddle. Have a blessed rest of your day.